Three Lives, Three Worlds, Lotus Steps Book 3. One Step for a Thousand Kulpas. Chapter 17. By Tang Chi. In the Wushuan Lake Pavilion, Wan Yu bit her nails nervously. This was a bad habit she had when she was young. She is not a weak queen. Her many years as a king have trained her to have a heart of diamond, making her cold and calm no matter what difficulties she faces. But today, she couldn't take it easy. She had a bad feeling. Seven days ago, she was taken out of the Star Order cave and returned to the palace. She woke up in the water pavilion, and Nancy told her that it was the palace guard who sent her back. She summoned the chief of the guard for questioning, but the chief of the guard said that a young guard under his command had delivered her to him. She thought that the little guard was probably ordered by Lian Song. Lian Song didn't send her back in person, which made her slightly unhappy, but she didn't care too much at that time, because as Lian Song's identity, she really didn't have to send her back to the water pavilion in person. After calling the captain of the guard to ask questions, she recalled what happened in the Star Order cave. After she and Lian Song entered the Xingling cave, they walked around for a while. Lian Song praised the beautiful scenery in the spiritual realm and even painted a landscape and waterfall with interest. He seemed to be interested only in the view of the sacred cave. Of course, she couldn't let him leave here after sightseeing. Not long after he finished the painting, she managed to lure the Four Realm Beasts to appear, causing the two of them to fall into the Four Realm Formation. Lian Song did not notice anything unusual. Then in the state of love, she seduced Lian Song. She thought everything would fall into place, but Lian Song didn't take the bait. Fortunately, she was smart and immediately pretended that she was being controlled by the state of love before flattering him. She was not sober. She didn't know if he believed it. She thought he might have believed it. Because when he used the sleep technique on her, his eyes were calm, without disgust or ridicule. It is easy to understand that he used the sleeping technique to make her sleep. After all, in his opinion, she was bewitched by the state of Eros. Since he happened to enter the Four Realms formation with his temperament, he naturally had to go through all four realms to make the trip worthwhile. It would be inconvenient to take her with him. After clarifying all this, Wanner sat quietly in the water pavilion for several hours that day, thinking about what to do next. She is a king who has endured humiliation and assumed a high position. When dealing with political affairs, she is very thoughtful, cautious, and tolerant, and rarely makes mistakes. But what she is facing now is not a political matter, but her obsession, the deepest selfish desire in her heart. In the face of this selfish desire, she cannot even maintain her rationality at all times, let alone prudence and forbearance. It wasn't that she didn't understand that it would be safer to stop for the time being. After all, she and Lian Song failed to make any progress in the realm of love. It was really difficult to get the concubine position in UNG Palace based on rumors alone. But she wanted Lian Song so much, and she also knew that if she missed this opportunity, she would not know when she would get the next one. So in the end, she decided to take the risk and still act according to the original plan. Therefore, in the afternoon of that day, the rumors in the royal city about the third prince of the Tian clan and Lady Mishia were pushed to a new climax. The citizens of the city were talking one after another, saying that the third prince and the female monarch had been alone in the Star Order cave for several days, and they must have encountered a beast from the Four Realms and got trapped. As the holy beast of the Blue Bird tribe, the Four Realms beast still has a certain reputation among the people. At least everyone knows that the Four Realms Beasts can condense the realm of love and regret, and they also know what these two realms are. So some good people spoke with certainty, saying that it was very possible that the Queen and the Third Prince had fallen into the Four Realms formation and had become husband and wife because of that formation. After all, the two of them were already in love with each other. How could a young couple resist the temptation of the beasts in the Four Realms of Love and Desire? Rumors spread loudly, and after two days, almost the entire royal city agreed that the third prince and their queen had become happily married, and it was a good thing. The citizens of the city were not very knowledgeable and thought this was a good thing. But the ministers in the court did not all think so. In the early morning of the next day, 
Some ministers and workers were entangled and attacked Wanyu. The courtiers moved out of the ancestral scriptures. The Dao Qingniao clan has always been loyal, and one wife can only marry one husband, especially the royal family. Even a king should not violate the laws of his ancestors. If a king loses his virginity to a man outside of marriage, he will be unworthy of his position and unable to be a king. The matter reached Lian Song's ears that day, but the next night, Wanyu invited Lian Song to Shuij to complain to him and ask for help. Now, when Wana recalls the night she met Lian Song, she still doesn't think he saw that she was the mastermind of all this. First of all, she did not spread the rumors among the people. Her people did secretly promote it, but the contents of the rumors were all imagined by the city residents. Even if Lian Song sent people to investigate, they could only come to a conclusion based on the rich imagination of the Bluebird clan city residents. It's not her fault. Secondly, when the courtiers in the court attacked her, it was not just a show. These veterans are all tough-minded, and they all have complicated relationships with her brothers and sisters who died in the battle to seize the throne. Although their attack on her was inseparable from her plan, it was also a real fact that these veterans wanted to use this to undermine her reputation and legitimacy in office. She understands very well that in order to make the play realistic, she must be cruel to herself. This play must not only look real, but preferably be real, so that it can deceive smart people. It just so happened that the person she wanted to deceive was a smart man. She remembered that at that time, Lian Song did not show any doubt after listening to her statement about her current difficult situation. He was quiet for a moment, his handsome eyebrows slightly furrowed, and the mysterious fan in his hand tapped the edge of the table very slowly, they are forcing you so hard. I guess they have believed the rumors. I can cooperate with you to clarify the rumors. I believe this will happen soon. You can pass by. She had expected that he would say this and burst into tears, half pretending, but half sincere. She tearfully told him about her difficulties, saying that although she was a king, she had always been burdened with a lot. When she came to the throne at a time when the political situation was in turmoil, she was constrained by her family, the royal power was declining, and she had been trying to govern for thousands of years. Now her situation is finally better, but still need to constantly compete with the wealthy. This time, the wealthy family who were not dealing with her wanted to use this to force her out of office and support a king who was more in their interests. Therefore, even if he came forward to clarify the matter and could not produce key evidence, the ministers and people would not don't believe what he says. They would just think that he didn't like her, so they wanted to break off the relationship with her. After she finished speaking, the young man stopped beating the fan, as if a little surprised, and asked her, nothing happened to us in the realm of love. Since you are innocent, why can't you come up with something evidence? She was silent for a long time. I am no longer innocent. When I first returned to the Bluebird clan, I encountered some bad things. She thought it would be difficult to tell this secret in front of him, but when things came to pass, she discovered that in fact, it is not as difficult as imagined. This is indeed a secret. Not long after she returned to the Bluebird clan, she was injured during a hunt and was rescued by the younger brother of the previous generation, Mrs. June. The man forced her to repay his kindness. The night she lost her innocence, she almost wanted to die, but the moment before she destroyed her soul, she was afraid. She wasn't willing to die, she didn't want to die, but she couldn't get rid of that person unless she died. Later she thought, since she couldn't get rid of it, why not make good use of it? Later, by committing herself to that person, she was adopted by Mrs. June as her legitimate daughter and became qualified to compete with her brothers and sisters for the throne. This thing is shameful, but it is also exploitable. Because the Third Highness in front of her has a cynical reputation as a prodigal son and seems to not care about everything, but she knows that he has always been kind and has a heart that cherishes the weak. In the past, Chang Yi was pitiful, and he helped Chang Yi. She pity, he helped her too. She discovered that at certain moments, her heart could be so hard that it was terrifying. 
At this time, when she mentioned this shameful past, she no longer felt disgusted and disgusted. She could actually think about how to better win the sympathy of the young man. She gathered tears and kept them in her eyes. I once told your highness that I have always regretted leaving UNG Palace because the most worry-free time of my life was spent in UNG Palace. I did not lie to your highness. Tears rolled down her cheeks, but she did not sob. She knew what kind of crying was the most pitiful because after leaving UNG Palace, the life I lived was mostly miserable and I have carried so much hardship and struggled to get to where I am today. I don't want to lose it all. The young man didn't speak for a while. After a long time, he said, it seems that the best way to solve your predicament is to get you married immediately. When he said this, his voice was very steady, and she could not tell what kind of emotion was contained in his voice, and the meaning of the sentence was also somewhat ambiguous. Is he willing to help her or not? She thought she needed to push him a little more. She let the tears fall down her cheeks, bit her lip, and suddenly bowed to the ground, begging the young man for her mother's sake to save her one more time and help her get through this difficult time. Her words were clever, and she blindly belittled herself, saying that she knew she was not good enough for him, and she did not dare to have such delusions. She would never occupy his concubine for long. Once the crisis was over, she would find an opportunity to take this concubine. He paid it back, and she will remember his great kindness to her forever. She felt that the young man's eyes were always on the top of her head, and then she heard him sigh and call her name— one. After a pause, he said, when your mother passes away, please ask me. I protected you until you came of age, and I did it, so I am not ashamed of your mother. And you should still remember your mother's hope for you, right? She was stunned. I, he said calmly, your mother hopes that you will be upright and self-reliant. It is enough to be an ordinary immortal in this wasteland. Integrity and self-reliance, these four words pierced her. She looked up suddenly and couldn't help but argue, but fate has pushed me to this point. A completely upright king, his highness is also in the heaven, isn't it true? Do you think this is ridiculous? She reacted as soon as the words came out of her mouth. If she wanted to lure him into her trap, she should be patient. She shouldn't be in such a mood. Thinking of this, she immediately burst into tears. Your highness, please forgive me for my rudeness just now. I, I was just too depressed. She lowered her head and wiped her tears and continued to show weakness. My mother wanted me to be self-reliant, and there is not a day that I don't remember. So in the past 10,000 years, no matter how hard it is, I can't. Come to ask your highness today, it's really. I have no choice. I can't lose it. The throne, I can't think about what will happen to a king who loses his throne. If I want to survive, I must keep this throne, no matter what the cost. No matter what the cost. The young man interrupted her. She heard the young man repeat her words. This time, his voice contained emotion and showed a bit of compassion. She wondered, had she finally impressed him? She couldn't help but look up at him, and when she looked up, she heard the mysterious fan in his hand knocking on the white jade table nearby. He stood up so she couldn't see his expression, only heard he said, just wait for two days and you will hear good news. After seeing Lian song off that night, Wanyu was very excited. Thinking that it had happened, she was so excited and joyful that she didn't sleep all night. During the two days of waiting for news about Lian song, she felt a little proud. She felt that she was able to handle this matter so well because she was so cruel to herself and her understanding of Lian Song. For more than 10,000 years, she has been watching him, and she understands him better than anyone else. And showing weakness is really a good weapon that can be used against anyone. She even felt that she had found a way that was most suitable for the two of them to get along, so she was full of longing for the future. But last night, she suddenly had a bad premonition. The premonition came out of the blue and she couldn't tell what happened. But she remembered the time when the eldest prince tripped her up, causing her to anger the king and almost be dismissed. She also had this bad premonition the night before. This feeling of panic continues to this day. She hoped she was overthinking it. 
Just when she was biting her thumbnail to the point where she couldn't help it, Nancy hurried in and said anxiously, And John, something is not good. Her hand suddenly trembled. In the afternoon of early summer, the wind from the lake contained the heat prematurely. It was actually a bit hot, but she only felt that her whole body was cold. Maybe there were some things that were beyond her control, but she never noticed. She thought uneasily. Zuti learned from Ian Lin what happened in the Four Realms formation after she fainted. When she woke up, she found herself in the bedroom where she used to live in Fulan Hall of Lutai Palace, with Ian Lin waiting beside her bed. After she took a bath and took medicine, she felt better. Ian Lin told her that she had been sleeping for seven days. That day in the Xingling Cave, Lian Song did not hunt the Four Realms beast. He spent some time subduing the beast, making it recognize its master again, and then took them out of the Four Realms formation together. Ian Lin carried a candied fruit box and picked out a candied red fruit and handed it to Zidi, who was leaning on the brocade couch. At that time, Your Majesty, you fainted, and Lady Misia also fell into a coma due to the coma spell. The third prince please ask me to take you back to Lutai Palace, and he will take you to heal your wounds. We returned to Lutai Palace that day, but four days ago, the third prince took you out of Xingling Cave and back to the palace. Zidi peeled off the candied red fruit and moistened her mouth, then looked at Yin Lin with a hint of inquiry in her eyes. Xiao Sanlang said he wanted to take me away, so you entrusted me to him. Yin Lin, this is not like you. Yin Lin was slightly absent-minded. At that time, he smiled bitterly. At that time, I was sucked by the beast of the four realms for my spiritual power and vitality. My situation was not good and I couldn't heal you. It would be better to hand you over to the third prince. The red fruit dyed Zhu Ti's fingertips red. She placed the fruit in the disc in front of her. Her eyes became a little worried. After thinking for a while, she asked, Yin Lin, are you in that state of regret? Have you achieved the perfection you wanted? Yin Lin's eyes suddenly turned red. He looked away and looked outside. Yes, that's perfect. He replied. After a pause, he looked at Zhu Ti again, and his expression returned to normal. But now that I think about it, there may be something wrong with me handing over your respect to the third prince. Zhu Ti raised her hand slightly, stopped his words, and smiled. You were right to hand me over to him. He is indeed the one who can save me. Yin Lin's eyebrows moved. What your majesty means is. But Zhu Ti had no intention of going into details and just said, Nothing. She frowned as if she was remembering something and asked him, Where is Xiao Sanling at this time? Just as Yin Lingang was about to return her, there were footsteps outside. Then, the mysterious fan opened the bead curtain that separated the inner and outer rooms. The young man entered with a smile and said, I was really flattered that you came looking for me as soon as you woke up. After saying such joking words, his gaze fell on Zhu Ti, but it was a little deep, as if he was observing something. But when Zhu Ti raised her eyes to look at him, his gaze on her became calm again. He sat down beside her bed naturally and raised his hand to feel her pulse. This time, when Lian Song checked her pulse, Zhu Ti did not block him or avoid him. She glanced at Yin Lin, and Yin Lin knew what he meant and retreated to the outer room. Lian Song's fingers only rested on her wrist for a few breaths before moving away. Zhu Ti asked him, what was diagnosed? His Highness the Third Prince was very calm, the pulses coming and going fluently, like beads rolling on a jade plate. After a pause, I'm afraid it's a slippery pulse. Zhu Ti nodded, oh, Shimai. She picked up the brocade pillow under her elbow and threw it towards him, aren't you using me for fun? Lian Song smiled and caught the brocade pillow, leaned over and put it in its original place. I saw you frowning as soon as you woke up, so I wanted to make you relax, so I was just joking with you. When she heard what he said, she frowned, and Zhu Ti remembered the reason why she was looking for him. She was silent for a moment and said, There is indeed a serious matter. Lian Song put down the brocade pillow and looked at her. You want to tell me why you appeared in the Four Realms formation at that time? Of course not. Zhu Ti denied, I want to say. The young man showed a disappointed expression. Oh, isn't it? As if he was not interested in this serious matter, she said. 
No, it's okay. He glanced at the candied red fruits she put on the small plate at hand. He picked a candied date from the candied fruit box left by In Lin and handed it to her. The candied red fruits are a bit sour. If you like sweet food, try this. He then said, you can tell me why you appeared while eating. In that four realm formation, Zudi was stuck. She didn't quite understand why the young man cared so much about this issue, but it was indeed one of the things she planned to talk to him about. She took the candy dates and thought about it. This matter, she explained as concisely as possible. One night I had a precognitive dream, dreaming about Wanner's plot against you. I was worried that something would happen to you, so I went to Xingling Cave to look for it. You. Lian Song was stunned for a moment, then he smiled. Oh, worry about me, he said. Zhu Ti felt that the tone in which he said this was a bit strange, but if she looked carefully, she couldn't figure out what was strange. They had a bone-gnawing mantra between them, and their relationship was unmatched by others. It was no wonder that she cared about him and worried about him. Of course I'm worried about you. She suppressed the strange feeling and answered him frankly. Only then did she have the mood to taste the candy dates, and asked him by the way, has the Wanner matter been settled? Lian Song nodded casually, absolutely. He picked a candied fig for her, by the way, what is the other serious matter that you wanted to talk to me about just now, but was interrupted by me? Oh! Zhu Ti responded, wiped her hands with a silk handkerchief, drank tea and rinsed her mouth, and then talked about the serious matter with Lian Song, before, in the Four Realms formation. I used the heavy method to cause the body to the evil power of the Western Emperor Blade was out of control. When I was most uncomfortable, you injected some kind of power into my body. That power actually suppressed the evil power of the Western Emperor Blade. I want to know what power you gave me. The smile on Lien Song's lips froze for a moment, very short. Before Zhu Ti noticed, he turned away, took the teapot and teacup from the small table beside him, and, while pouring water for himself, he asked her, Then one night, do you remember? It sounded very indifferent, as if it was just a casual question, but if you look carefully, you can see that the hand of His Highness pouring tea is not that steady. Zuti was focused on business and did not pay attention to such details. When she heard that Lien Song not only did not answer her question, but instead asked her if she remembered what happened that night, she couldn't help but smile bitterly. No, I don't remember anything. She shook her head. I fainted in the state of self-consciousness and woke up just now. I have no memory of this period. I know how you saved me because I had a precognitive dream about you healing me. The dream got some of that night's. Before he could finish his words, he was interrupted by a cough, but it was the young man who choked on his tea. Zhu Ti was leaning on several stacked brocade pillows and half leaning on the jade bed. Seeing him like this, she couldn't help but sit upright, leaned closer to him, patted his back and helped him calm down. Are you okay? His Highness stopped coughing, did not look at her, and put the cup in his hand back on the small table. Then, what did you dream about? He asked her. Zhu Ti leaned back on the brocade pillow, thought for a while, and smiled. I'm not very presentable, she said, covering half of her face with her hands, as if she felt embarrassed or ashamed. But despite this, she still spoke honestly. He continued, I remember that the evil force that was roaming uncontrollably in my body caused me a lot of pain. I was forced to lose my mind by the pain. I wanted you to save me, and I asked you if I was going to die. You comforted me and told me that I would not die and would be fine soon, and told me not to be afraid. Then, your hand pressed against my vest, and then, some cold but soft power like water after entering my body, I felt a lot more comfortable. The dream ended here. After listening to Zhu Ti's description of the dream, His Highness the Third Prince replied calmly with a few meaningless words, Oh, that's it. Although his face was calm, he was relieved in his heart. The dream ended just in time, he thought. She didn't know what happened after that, and that was fine. His Highness the Third Prince regained his composure. He was no longer obsessed with being a questioner who looked calm, but was actually testing every step of the way. 
He also began to answer Zhu Tiai's questions candidly in long sentences. I did give it to you. Some of the power is the power of my soul. He thought about the wording. I transferred the power of water into your body, used it to lure out the power of light from you, and then guided the two powers of the soul in one force is combined in your spirit palace. The power of light and water combined into one force is powerful and can comfort you. I originally just wanted to use it to calm your spirit palace and help you reunite your mana and the raging power of the Western Emperor Blade. Confrontation, but I didn't expect that after the power of your soul and mine were combined, I actually came out of your spiritual mansion and suppressed the evil power of the Western Emperor Blade. Zhu Tiai's eyes slowly opened wide, and she raised her hand to press her heart in surprise. Under the Sea of Mind, that is the location of the Lingfu. She lowered her eyes slightly and whispered, Is it the combined power of our souls? His Highness the Third Prince nodded in agreement and added some more. Perhaps you have also felt that it not only suppressed the evil power of the Western Emperor Blade, but also suppressed the evil power a little, although not much, just a little. He continued, I'm actually very curious as to why the combined force of your soul and mine can dispel the evil power of the Western Emperor's blade in your body. After saying this, he stopped and stared at the bed, still lowering his eyes as if thinking. The woman who was looking at something looked at her expression. Although I don't know what the evil power of the Western Emperor's blade is, I think you should already have the answer, Eu, right? Hearing these words, Zhu Ti raised her head in astonishment and met the young man's gaze. She smiled helplessly. Xiao Sanling, your sensitivity is truly unmatched. You are right, I have a child. The answer, actually, before I came to the Blue Bird clan, I had some guesses about what the evil power of the Western Emperor's blade was. I didn't want to tell you before because it was just my guess. But this time, in the Four Realms Formation, when the evil power was raging in my body, I felt it seriously again. Her expression became solemn, if I am not mistaken, I think that the evil power entrusted to the Western Emperor's blade should be there is no doubt that the power of the Batama Wa is there. It's just that I don't understand where the power of the Batama Wa on the Western Emperor's blade comes from. After all, all the Batama Wa were used by Father God to create the mortal world. That evil force is actually the power of Batamahua. His Royal Highness was slightly startled. He and Emperor Donghua had been exploring this power for a long time and had some ideas, but none of them thought that this power would be the power of the creation Batamahua. It is recorded in the historical records of the gods that after the death of Panga God in the past, a red lotus flower, the Bataemo flower, grew on his immortal corpse. This flower inherited the creation power of Panga God. Later, when Father God created a place for the human race to live, he scattered the petals of the red lotus into the chaos. Each petal gave birth to a small world, and the 3,000 mortal worlds came from this. The Batumo flower is a flower that feeds on the corpse of the immortal Pangu. Just one petal can give birth to a world, which shows how powerful it is. His Highness the Third Prince's expression also became solemn, and he looked at Zhu Ti. As for where the power of the bull-shaped flower on the Western Emperor's blade comes from, maybe I can answer your question. He paused, but that's not good news. Zhu Ti was doubtful. You actually know, Xiao Sanling? You might as well tell me. The Third Highness was rarely serious. It is written in the ancient history that when Father God scattered the flower petals of the Patumo to chaos, three petals were attached to his sleeves and were not scattered. Later, these three petals were the Father God was stored in his hometown, the realm of nothingness. Logically speaking, the three red lotus petals should always be stored in the realm of nothingness, but before the new god era ceremony of conferring gods, Lord Mo Yuan renovated the realm of nothingness. At that time, I found that the three red lotus petals were missing. He concluded, I think maybe these three red lotus petals were taken away by Qing Jiang. Zhu Ti was silent for a moment, her delicate eyebrows tightened. After a long time, she spoke, with a bit of shock in her voice, in the realm of nothingness of Father God, there are still flower petals rubbed with a bowl. Is that so? I don't know anything about what you're talking about. She rubbed her forehead, 
I also read through your ancient history a while ago, but I didn't see this section. His Highness the Third Prince was silent for a moment. What you are reading should be the first edition written by Lord Jian. After Lord Emo Yuan founded Kunlun Su, he published a revised edition that added many historical events that only he knew about. You should read that one. Zhu Ti was also silent for a moment. It seems that I still have a lot of homework to make up for. When she finished speaking, her expression suddenly moved. I suddenly remembered something. She couldn't help but sit on the stacked brocade pillows. He straightened up and looked at the young man. According to you, Emo Yuan reorganized the realm of nothingness before the New God Era ceremony, which was 240,000 years ago. In other words, 240,000 years ago, the petals of the Petumo that were supposed to exist in the realm of nothingness have disappeared. Coincidentally, Qin Zhang also disappeared for no reason 240,000 years ago. And then I remembered that 240,000 years ago, Father God he came to Gugu once and asked me to borrow a ray of eternal light. His Highness the Third Prince immediately understood what she wanted to say and asked keenly, did Father God ever tell you what the light he borrowed from you was used for? Zhu Ti rubbed her eyebrows and thought about it for a moment. He seemed to have said that he wanted to use this light to add it to his formation to suppress a curfew who broke the ban. He didn't mention anything else and I didn't. Did not ask. The Third Highness didn't know how to evaluate her answer. After a while, he sighed and asked her. He didn't say it, so you didn't ask. Are all of you ancient gods so uncurious? Zhu Ti pursed her lips unhappily. In the old god era, the eight wastelands were extremely chaotic. Immortals with a little bit of fame would subjugate many demons and subjugate them in their lifetimes. Suppressing demons was as common as eating and drinking. And Father God borrowing the eternal light from me is just like, she gave an analogy. For example, if you get jealous after eating dumplings and borrow a bottle of vinegar from your neighbor, Naturally, he won't ask you when he lends you vinegar. It's the dumplings with whatever fillings you want to use it with, but that's all. His Highness was impressed by her metaphor and was speechless for a moment. Okay, let me borrow some jealousy. In the end, he replied with these five meaningless words. Zhu Ti hummed and continued to speculate. I guess Father God lent me this bottle of vinegar, a uh, no, that ray of eternal light, just to use it to deal with Qing Jiang. You should know that Qing Jiang is the demon lord of darkness. In a sense, Qing Jiang and I are naturally incompatible. This conjecture is reliable. Her Highness the Third Highness tapped her fingers and supplemented her inference. The emperor once said that Qing Jiang was very ambitious. More than 200,000 years ago, when they were still studying in Shuizhuang Academy, Qing Jiang Jiang is already one of the 27 kings of the demon clan, and he has begun to plan to conquer the world, conquer the world, and conquer the eight wastelands. So it is very possible that he knows that there are still three creation Petumo flower petals existing in the realm of nothingness, wanted to obtain that powerful power to unify the demon clan and then subdue other clans one by one. So he secretly invaded the realm of nothingness, but was discovered by Father God and was finally suppressed and sealed. He pointed his finger. He paused. Maybe this is the reason why Qing Jiang suddenly disappeared back then. Zhu Ti frowned. Well, I think so too. In fact, she was silent for a moment, then sighed softly, as if she had made up her mind, and looked at the young man. Actually, a few months ago I woke up at that time. I had a precognitive dream. Dreaming that in three years the Bahuang would usher in a catastrophe. The initiator of this catastrophe was Qing Jiang, and the power in the Shihuang Blade was the one who created this catastrophe. The key point. She did not tell Yin Song that she would need to sacrifice for this calamity, but when she sacrificed, Qing Jiang killed her. If she could resolve this catastrophe by sacrificing chaos, she would not be so actively exploring the Western Emperor Blade. She studied the Western Emperor Blade just to change her prediction. She has never tried to change the precognition, so she doesn't know if it can be changed, but if everything develops according to what she saw in her dream, she will eventually be killed by Qing Jiang, then her death will be meaningless. 
The God of Light has never been afraid of death, but she cannot accept this meaningless death. This gave her the first desire to change her prediction. She continued, The power of the three petals is the power of three mortals. This power is enough to destroy the heaven and the earth. It can indeed help Ching Jiang achieve his goal of overthrowing the gods, unifying the four races, and making the demons enslave the world. Selfish Desires He has not made any movement now. I think it can only mean that he does not know how to use this power most effectively, so that it can exert its greatest effect and overthrow the gods and subvert the eight wastes in one fell swoop. At this point, she felt more and more he guessed that he was right and asked Lian Song, Do you know when Emperor Donghua will be released from seclusion? It's time to talk to him about this matter. What Zhu Ti said was shocking, but His Highness was not too surprised. He had anticipated Qing Zhang's ambition, and he also knew that sooner or later, he would start a war between the gods and demons. However, this war will happen a little earlier than he imagined. Hearing Zhu Ti ask him when Dong Hua would be released from seclusion, His Highness suppressed his thoughts and raised his eyebrows. From what you said, the God Clan is already on the verge of life and death. It would be too slow to wait for him to come out of seclusion. If he and Beheit Sangling, there may not be anything we can do against him. Fortunately, he is in retreat in Yangshu Pavilion in Taichin Palace. His Highness the Third Prince Yun Danfenking said, We can go and demolish Yangshu Pavilion. Zhu Ti was confused. Are you serious? His Highness the Third Prince was very calm. What else? Zhu Ti looked at him with admiration for a moment, then glanced at the gentle night sky and thought for a moment, that's okay, then let's set off back to the Nine Heavens tomorrow. His Highness the Third nodded in agreement. That's it for now. Just as the room returned to silence and His Highness was thinking about whether it was time to leave, Zhu Ti suddenly asked him, By the way, I was busy talking about business and forgot to ask you, what happened after that? This sentence had no beginning or end, and His Highness the Third Prince was puzzled for a moment. What? Zuti didn't look at him. Her eyes fell on the bright pearl beside the bed that gradually glowed as the light in the room dimmed. I'm talking about that dream. She whispered, I only dreamed that you gave me the power of your soul. What happened after that? She adjusted her words. I don't know if it was mine. Illusion, I think, when I talked about that dream just now, you seemed to really not want me to dream about what happened afterward. The expression on the face of His Highness the Third Highness remained unmoved. What do you think will happen next? I'm asking you because I don't know. His Highness held his breath for a moment. Then he lowered his eyes and smiled, as if to hide his embarrassment. It took a lot of effort to save you, and I was almost led astray. I really don't want you to know that, but... I don't want you to know that. You just saw me embarrassed? What did you think? Zhu Ti looked at him with mixed suspicion. The young man's expression was natural, without any flaw. I didn't know if it was true or just pretending. She knew she couldn't get anything out by asking any more, so she said slightly disappointedly, Oh, is that so? At this time, Lian Song also looked at Zhu Ti. The night is getting darker and darker, and the room is getting darker and darker. Although the pearl has light, the light is a little weak and can only illuminate a corner. The faint light enveloped her body, coating her with a silvery glow. She looked pure, clear, and full of divinity, but he remembered that night inappropriately. What she was asking about just now was the night he saved her. That night was not what he said. He was simply saving her, and in order to save her, he almost went wrong. Nothing like that. That night was chaotic, dangerous, and confusing. Yes, confused. That night was very confusing. There's a cliff in Xingling Cave, and a pavilion is built on the cliff. The pavilion is surrounded by trees and is adjacent to a waterfall. When I visited this cave with Tong Wanner, I saw paintings by His Highness the Third Prince in the attic. Because the Starling Cave was full of spiritual energy and was an excellent place for healing, after arranging for Yin Lin and Wanner to leave, His Highness the Third Highness took the unconscious Zhu Ti to the attic. There was no moon that night, and it was very dark on the cliff. Fortunately, there were pearls embedded in the four corners of the attic, so there was still some ghostly light in the room. 
he tried to inject spiritual power into her body to wake her up. As he wished, she woke up, but under the torture of the evil power of the Western Emperor Blade, she could not stay awake at all, like a spiritual snake that had lost its tail and could not support itself. Hold yourself tight and lean against him uncontrollably. She was in such pain that even if they were really close, or even too close, he would certainly not have any fond thoughts. In the first half of the operation on her, they were indeed like the most ordinary patients and doctors. As she said, she was in extreme pain, had many childish emotions, and kept complaining to him. He comforted her and tried to reduce her pain using safe methods that he could control. It's hard to tell whether it was because of her good luck or because of his bold assumption. Without making too many detours, he tried a way to help her fight against the evil force. The power of the water god soul combined with the power of the light god soul. The newly generated combined force successfully suppressed the evil power of the western emperor's blade in her body. The evil power could no longer control her or torture her. After spitting out several mouthfuls of bruised blood, she finally calmed down and whispered in a dazed voice that she wanted to drink water. He was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief and was about to pour water for her when an unexpected accident happened. The four realm beasts he had subdued also followed him to the cliff and have been squatting outside the attic to nurse their injuries. The strange beast smelled the bloody smell in the attic and was attracted by it. It walked up the steps with cat steps and walked into the inner room. The giant pupils glowing with golden light were like two bright lamps, shining brightly on the two of them. Shirkai's treatment of Zhu Ti sounds very simple in theory, but every step requires the patient guidance of the Third Highness with the power of his soul. The meticulousness and prudence required is like carving flowers on the tip of a needle or carving a boat on a fruit core, which consumes a lot of energy. He has no strength, so after the operation, even if he has always been energetic, he will inevitably feel tired. When people are tired, they easily lose their guard. Not to mention Zhu Ti. Naturally, when the two of them were unprepared, they suddenly faced the giant eyes of the Four Realms Beast. Before they could react, they both fell into the Four Realms Formation. The first person to greet them was the head of the Desire Formation, the Realm of Love and Desire. Because His Highness the Third Highness is already the master of these four realm beasts, as soon as he fell into this realm, he saw the gate to exit this place and could leave at any time. But this does not prevent him from being obsessed with love in the state. Zhu Ti was not with him. This is the reason why His Highness did not choose to leave immediately. This time, the realm of love has changed. In front of His Highness the Third Prince is no longer the enchanting palace filled with red candles, but a small building with white crystals as beams and white jade as walls, which is more in line with his aesthetics. As the master of the Four Realms Beast, he also knows that these buildings in the Four Realms are the collection of the Four Realms Beasts. It will change the scenery in the Four Realms formation according to its mood, just like a little cub who loves to play house. But that's not the point. The point is that His Highness thought that maybe Zhu Ti was in this building. It was a moonlit night in the scene, and the moon was like an ice disc, hanging high in the sky. There was no light coming out of the small building, so I thought I hadn't lit the lamp yet. But beside the moonstone staircase, there was a lantern hanging with a huge luminous pearl as the light source. His Highness held the lamp and stepped onto the second floor step by step. With the help of lights and moonlight, he could clearly see the layout of the second floor. Its structure is a bit strange, with only four large pillars supporting an umbrella-like roof, with many white gauze hanging from the top. The white gauze dances with the night wind, blocking people's sight. The ground is covered with a thick white blanket. There seems to be a person wrapped in the fluttering white gauze. He took two steps closer, and the white gauze was suddenly lifted away, and the figure threw herself into his arms. In other words, she fell into his arms. The lantern fell to the ground and the pearl rolled. In the soft light, he saw clearly the face of the person in his arms. His eyebrows were lightly furrowed, and a soft golden pearl was attached to the brow bone of his right eye. Zuti is her. 
The last time His Highness the Third Highness was in the state with Wanner, he felt a little dizzy, and perhaps some inappropriate hallucinations appeared in his mind, but he did not feel that this state could amplify a person's love a hundred times. Effect. However, at this moment, when he figured out who the person in his arms was, seven emotions and six desires suddenly surged into his heart. When he saw her beauty, he liked her. When he saw her weakness, he felt pity. When he saw her frown, he became worried. He was shocked by what he was feeling at this moment and understood that this was not normal. He wanted to push her away a little or talk to distract her so that everything could get back on track. Therefore, he asked her a question to which he already knew the answer. You, why are you here? But just as his hand was about to leave, she fell bonelessly, and he had to hug her again, listening to her whispering with her eyes closed. I feel dizzy and tired standing, Kosaburo. I want to lie down. The evil power of the Western Emperor's blade in her body had just subsided not long ago, and she must be very weak mentally and physically. It was not easy for her to stay awake until now after falling here. She should indeed feel tired. The pity in his heart was even greater, and he really couldn't refuse her. After hesitating for a moment, he sat down on the ground and let her lie in his arms. She leaned in his arms and pillowed on his lap, as if she felt safe by being with him. She frowned slightly and told him the whole story in a low voice. The voice was very soft and weak, with tiredness and sleepiness. It spoke for a while and paused for a while. I lost weight for a moment. When I opened my eyes, I was surrounded by white gauze. I seemed to have entered a maze and wanted to find the exit. I wandered around for a while, and then I saw your lantern. She closed her eyes and murmured, and then slowly, the voice became inaudible. She was very tired and sleepy, so she fell asleep while talking. The silver moon, the white building, the breeze, the gauze, the snow-white blanket, the rolling lantern, and the beauty sleeping peacefully on his legs. His Highness the Third Prince was in a trance for a while. He had many emotions in his heart, and even felt that thanks to this state of love, his most emotional moment in the past 70,000 years might be this night. The fact that he can have such thoughts shows that he still retains his sobriety and does not want to sink. But it is very tiring to maintain this kind of sobriety. He must constantly tear himself apart from the seven emotions in his body. And in the midst of this tearing, he suddenly remembered that shadow, the shadow or hallucination, that flashed through his mind when one you came to seduce him in the realm of love. When love overwhelms reason and has the upper hand, the hallucination has a waterfall of green hair, a graceful figure, a mist and a cloud, beautiful, but hazy and unreal shadows, actually have entities, fluttering. And inhabiting she fell into his arms and overlapped with the goddess sleeping on his leg. They were so compatible, as if they were the same person, but he had never realized it before. At this moment, he finally realized it. His mind was greatly shaken. During the gap between the huge earthquakes, he couldn't help but think of his memory of the river in the mirror, the blank frame in the river, and the figure of Zhu Ti who appeared before the blank frame but suddenly disappeared. He suddenly realized that maybe he had made a big mistake. He thought that the blank frame in the memory of the river was related to the demons, and that the old relationship between him and Zudi in Tiangui Mountain was related to this major event. But is it possible that there is an old relationship between them? That fate actually refers to the love between men and women? This should have been a very nonsense guess, but at this moment in the night, when his emotions were amplified hundreds of times, his judgment told him that he and Zhu Ti had an old relationship. Any. Speculation is more reasonable. In this way, Ian Lin's strange attitude towards him makes sense. And it makes sense for the inexplicable palpitation and familiarity in his heart when he called her Ayu for the first time after he and Xiao Zudi made the bone gnawing mantra. At the same time, she quarreled with him, and she told him that even third brother, you are 70,000 years old, and you have not yet met your destined person. And she is not worried because she was concerned about the beauty around you in the past and did not want to be good to you. The answer to the spiritual injury, why it made his heart suffocate and cause him so much pain. 
However, the problem is that if they just met by chance in Tiangue Mountain and spent one night together, he didn't think that just for this one night, he would be able to develop any feelings for her, making him subconsciously pity and cherish her. She even felt pain for her. So it is very possible that his memory is not only wrong with that one frame, and they are not limited to that night. Perhaps his memory had been altered by someone, and someone had covered his real memory with a set of detailed and logically precise false memories. This is very possible. He should have been outraged at this conclusion. But even he found it strange that he didn't. He seemed to be doing a jigsaw puzzle and finally found a long-lost piece of the jigsaw puzzle, completing the cherished picture scroll in his hand. The joy of getting a complete picture made him no longer care about how much effort he had to put into the last piece of the puzzle. He was just glad that he finally found it. This is his state of mind at the moment. He was glad that he finally figured out what was wrong with his memory. This piece of the puzzle was crucial to him. Although he didn't know what it looked like yet, it was enough to temporarily plug the hole in his heart. Thinking of this, His Highness tried his best to suppress the many emotions in his heart and the accompanying desires. He planned to take Zidi away immediately. Although he didn't quite understand the influence of this state of love on him at first, in the last half-quarter of an hour, he had become very aware of its power. He wasn't sure if he could hold on for another half-quarter of an hour. He reached out to hug her and was about to get up and go to the realm. When Da Heng hugged her, she was still quiet. If she had been quiet, this would have been an easy task. But when he was about to get up, she moved. As if he was uncomfortable standing up, she grunted in protest, pulled away his hands from around her knees, and hid in his arms, wrapping her arms around his waist. In fact, he could have taken her away by force regardless of her comfort. But at this moment, he couldn't move. She didn't wake up. He must first have desire for her, and this state of love can amplify his desire. It was undeniable that he had a desire for her, and the thought that they might have an old relationship made it even more difficult for him to restrain himself. He couldn't help but raise his hand and touch her face. The touch of her fingers might have made her uncomfortable. She hummed, and then she freed up a hand to hold his hand, fixing it on her cheek. For some unknown purpose, after fixing it, she rubbing. However, these actions were all subconscious and she still didn't wake up. He used to think that her instinctive closeness to him was due to the fact that they had made the bone-eating mantra, but at this moment, another possibility was like a dense spider web, entangling his mind and squeezing it hard, wiping out everything. Calmness and sobriety were pushed out, leaving only his many sentimental emotions towards her magnified a hundred times, making his heart feel like it was being burned by fire. Her lips were so close to his palm that he only had to move to reach them. But he didn't want to touch the petal-like lips with his hands. In his confused thoughts, he thought about it, or maybe he didn't think about it. A more accurate statement would be that he had a feeling that her lips were soft and would feel warm when he kissed her. When he pressed close to her, she will tremble slightly, and at that time, her eyebrow bones and the ends of her eyes should be a little red, showing the color of rouge turning into snow. Her eyes should be moist, as if they are filled with tears, but no tears. He no longer remembered to take her out. The night is very quiet, the bright moon shines brightly here, and the breeze wraps around the white gauze in a silent dance not far away. His Highness the Third Highness raised the head of the woman in his arms by some mistake and kissed her lips before she frowned in discomfort. It is indeed soft and warm to the touch. He seemed to smell the fragrance of flowers, the fragrance of flowers, which also made him feel familiar. The blood was stirring in his body. He wanted to cherish her and kiss her softly. He did the same, but at the same time, he had a sadistic desire in his heart. He wanted to torture her severely and kiss her awake to see her reaction. He imagined that she would be shy, but also have an innocent boldness. She would probably not push him away, but would hug his neck and take the initiative to deepen the kiss. Pure, beautiful, fragile, firm, pitiful, but fearless. How about, to him, his head suddenly hurt. Suddenly a tiger roar came from the distance. 
The howling of the four realm beasts woke up the third highness, allowing him to find a moment of clarity and regain his sanity. While his sense was still there, he quickly hugged Zhu Ti and left the for realm's formation. They returned to the small attic on the cliff. After settling Zhu Ti, he went to sit quietly in the mountain waterfall next to the attic for a night to distinguish between his speculations about his old relationship with Zhu Ti in the Four Realms formation, which ones were rational and which ones were purely emotional. In the end, he still felt that all the speculations were logical and not because he was disturbed by the state of love and acted out of emotion. And if his memory has really been modified, the mind mirror in the phase of self-realization will no longer be of any help to this matter. He had to take some time to go to Shirley Peach Grove and ask God Jien to check it out for him. Although he hated others touching his memories, he had to do so this time. This is a helpless move. In the next two days, the Four Realm Beast recovered from its injuries. He no longer had to look at the strange beast. Although Zuti was not awake yet, it was no big deal to visit her spiritual house, so he took her back. Lutai Palace still temporarily resides in Fulan Palace. This is everything that happened between them in the Star Order Cave. After Zuti woke up, he came to see her and talked to her for a long time. In fact, he was pretending to be calm for many times. He originally thought that he had passed the test, but at the end of the conversation, she still asked them what happened in the Star Order Cave. He fooled her. He also knew that she didn't quite believe it. But he didn't want her to know those things. Because what is going on between them is still vague, like flowers in the fog. This was something he couldn't talk about. He didn't know how to explain it to her, but he didn't want to lie to her either. So in the end, he just smiled and whispered, There is a puzzle about myself that I haven't figured out yet. I will tell you when I figure it out. In fact, it's not his problem alone. If they really had an old relationship and his memory was changed again, then who changed his memory and for what purpose? Why does she seem to have forgotten what happened between them? He needs to figure this out. Finally, he stood up and said as if nothing had happened, You should rest early. We will leave tomorrow. Zuti nodded and looked at him with doubts and a bit of inquiry in her eyes, but she said nothing more. End of chapter 17, book 3